Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, mystery, sci-fi film called Donnie Darko. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. On October 2, 1988, a teenager named Donnie wakes up in the middle of the road after sleepwalking the night before. He takes in the sights, confused at what happened to him at first, before smiling. Then, he rides his bicycle back to his home in a small town in Virginia, where his family spends the morning typically despite him disappearing in the night. That evening, Dunn has dinner with his family, his parents, Eddie, Anne Rose, and his sisters, Elizabeth, and Samantha. Elizabeth and Eddie discuss politics, which leads to Rose suggesting that Elizabeth go to Harvard next fall. Donnie makes an inappropriate joke to his little sister that leads to an argument between him and Elizabeth. Later that night, Rose confronts her son about disappearing in the night. Donnie becomes defensive and suggests that she take his medications instead. Rose leaves and discusses his behavior with Eddie. Unable to sleep, Eddie heads to the living room to watch TV upstairs, Donnie is woken up by a mysterious voice that leads him to sleepwalk out of his bedroom. Donnie passes by his father, but he has fallen asleep in the living room. The voice beckons him as he walks outside and into the dark streets. Finally, Donnie reaches a golf course and smiles at the figure before him. There stands a strange person wearing a creepy rabbit costume. The rabbit tells him that the world will end in 28 days, 6 hours, 42 minutes, and 12 seconds. Back at home, Elizabeth had just returned when something loud and heavy crashes into the house, alerting everyone. The next day, Donnie wakes up on the golf course, finding a marker in his hand and numbers 28, 6, 42, and 12 written on his arm. He walks home and sees officers and spectators around his house as the jet engine that fell on his bedroom is being removed. The FAA provides them accommodations and payment for repairs in exchange for a non-disclosure agreement. Donnie learns that the FAA hasn't figured out where the jet engine came from. In their hotel room, Samantha asks questions about the jet engine, but her old siblings dismiss her questions. In the other room, their parents talk about an old high school classmate who died on the way to their prom after a paranoid episode. Eddie worries if Donnie will end up the same way. On the next day, Donnie and Samantha meet up with their schoolmates, Ronald, Sean, Joni, and Charita. The girls eagerly ask about the jet engine incident while Donnie's friends offer him a cigarette. Ronald starts mocking Charita, but Donnie defends her. At school, Donnie attends an English class discussing the destructors by Graham Greene. His teacher, Karen Pomeroy, asks for his opinion on the book's passage about destruction. He suggests that since destruction is a form of creation, the novel's characters may want to see the world torn apart to change something. The door opens, and all eyes meet the new girl, Gretchen Ross. Ms. Pomeroy challenges Gretchen to sit next to the boy she finds most attractive, and she chooses Donnie. On their way to Donnie's psychiatrist, Eddie laments reconstructing their house and how the FAA refuses to give them information about what happened. Distracted by the conversation, Eddie nearly hits an old woman standing in the middle of the road. Donnie walks up to the woman to help, and she whispers something in his ear. At Dr. Thurman's office, Donnie recounts meeting the figure in the rabbit costume, who he's named Frank. Donnie explains how Frank told him that the world is ending, but he refuses to believe that. On the next day, Donnie's class watches a video about overcoming fears hosted by Jim Cunningham. Again, Donnie hears Frank's voice, who advises him to pay close attention to the video. While asleep on the couch, Donnie dreams about the school in the water. He wakes up, seeing Frank watching him. Under Frank's influence, Donnie leaves the house while carrying an axe. He reaches a building's water pipe and breaks it. On the next day, Donnie teases Samantha about a short story she wrote while waiting for the bus. Sean points out that their bus is 20 minutes late. Two girls from their school run up to them, reporting that the school is closed due to flooding in the building. At the school, Principal Cole stands in the flooding building, the water is leaking from a busted water main. Outside, they find an axe protruding from the school's statue's head. A message is written at the foot of the statue, saying, they made me do it. While walking back to school, Donnie spots Gretchen getting cornered by the school bullies Seth and Ricky. The two walk together, where he learns that Gretchen moved with her mom to escape her stepdad after he stabbed her mother. Donnie shares that he was arrested for burning down an abandoned house, then clarifies that he's gotten his life straight after the event. Before going their separate ways, Donnie asks Gretchen out and she accepts. During his next therapy session, Dr. Thurman puts Donnie under hypnosis, and he starts talking about Gretchen. Dr. Thurman changes the subject to school and his family, but Donnie continues talking about girls and fantasizing about the actress Christina Applegate. Dr. Thurman ends the hypnosis when she sees Donnie unzipping his pants. Back at school, the police order the students to write they made me do it on the board to match their handwriting with the vandalism. When it's Donnie's turn, Principal Cole marks him as suspicious, given his hastiness. While in the bathroom, Seth accuses Donnie of spreading rumors that he flooded the school. Then, Seth puts a knife to Donnie's throat, accusing him of doing the deed instead before leaving. Later that day, Donnie and his friends hang out in a field, shooting at bottles as they argue about the Smurfs. 
However, their conversation is interrupted when the same old woman that Eddie nearly hit before stops in the middle of the road again, alarming a driver. Donnie's friends nickname her Grandma Death, as she is often seen standing in the middle of the road to check her empty mailbox that never receives any mail. That evening, the school hosts an emergency PTA meeting to determine who flooded and vandalized the school. The gym teacher, Mrs. Kitty Farmer, links the act of vandalism to the story, The Destructors, which Ms. Pomeroy teaches in her English class. Mrs. Farmer claims that the novel inspired the act and shouldn't be taught in their school. As this happens, Donnie finds Frank in his bathroom, who assures him that no one will find out what he did. Donnie faces the strange creature, but a force field seemingly blocks him from Frank. He asks why Frank led him to flood the school to which Frank merely explains that they are in grave danger. When asked where he came from, Frank questions if Donnie believes in time travel. The conversation ends when Samantha walks into the bathroom, Frank has disappeared. On Poetry Day, Donnie reads a poem he wrote about Frank. Later that day, Mrs. Farmer implements attitude lessons, but Donnie argues the concept that she's teaching, insisting that life and human emotions cannot be lumped into categories. Due to this argument, Donnie's parents are called into the principal's office. Despite Mrs. Farmer's hysterics, Rose and Eddie are not bothered by Donnie's behavior, though they suspend his after-school activities as punishment. Mrs. Farmer lectures Rose on raising her son, shocking the mother. On October 10th, Donnie learns time travel theories from his science teacher, Dr. Kenneth Manidoff. Dr. Manidoff gives Donnie a book titled The Philosophy of Time Travel, written by a former nun who suddenly turned to science. Donnie recognizes the author's name Roberta Sparrow as Grandma Death. In his next therapy session, Donnie talks about Roberta and how Frank told him to look into time travel, leading him to assume that Frank wants him to talk to Roberta. Donnie tells Dr. Thurman that Roberta said that every living creature dies alone, which reminded him of his childhood dog, who died. Donnie admits that he has stopped wondering about God but confesses that he doesn't want to be alone. While watching football that evening, Donnie sees a bubble emerging from his father and sister, dictating their next steps. He looks down and sees a bubble on his chest, directing him to go somewhere. Donnie follows the bubble to his parents' room, where he finds a gun in the closet. A week later, Donnie walks home with Gretchen, where they talk about turning back the time. Donnie leans to kiss her, but Gretchen avoids him, saying that she wants their first kiss to be something she'll remember fondly of in the future. After pondering Donnie's behavior, Rose and Eddie visit Dr. Thurman to discuss him. Dr. Thurman suggests that Donnie is afraid of the world, and thus he's detached himself from reality. Dr. Thurman tells them about Frank, which the parents aren't aware of. The signs point to Donnie having daylight hallucinations and paranoid schizophrenia. During this, Donnie continuously jams a knife onto his bathroom mirror, imagining Frank in the reflection. Days later, Jim Cunningham hosts a school assembly that Mrs. Farmer arranged. Jim presents a story as part of the lesson, where the protagonist is named Frank, distracting Donnie. Once Jim receives questions from the students, Donnie finds his answers absurd and starts berating Jim. He offers crude advice to the students who raised their questions earlier. The adults are horrified at Donnie's statements, yet the students cheer him as he's being escorted away. After school, Donnie rants about Jim's hypocrisy to Gretchen. He hands her Roberta's book and explains that he sees bizarre things tied to the book. Hoping for answers, the two visit Roberta's home, but no one responds. Finally, while checking her mailbox, they spot Roberta watching them on the terrace. In his mind, Donnie hears Frank telling him to send Roberta a letter. The next day, Mrs. Farmer's insistence on teaching the students morality hindered the other teachers. Dr. Manidoff refuses to discuss philosophy with Donnie when he brings God into the argument, and Ms. Pomeroy confiscates copies of the destructors from the students. While walking home from school, Donnie finds Jim's wallet on the street, learning where he lives. During Gretchen and Donnie's science presentation, Seth and Ricky bring up Gretchen's stepfather, which upsets her. She storms off the school with Donnie following behind. Full of emotions, Gretchen kisses him, solidifying their relationship. That night, Donnie and Gretchen watch a movie together. Gretchen falls asleep in the middle of the film, allowing Donnie to speak to Frank. Frank removes the head of his costume, revealing the face of a young man with an injured eye. He recounts that his father and his grandfather are also named Frank. The movie warps, showing Donnie a portal that seems to lead to the sky. Then, he envisions fire as Frank advises him to burn it to the ground. Finally, Donnie leaves the cinema alone, formulating a plan. While Jim hosts the school's talent show, including Samantha's dance group as one of the contestants, Donnie finds his way to Jim's house and pours gas all over. Jim's house burns down as the crowd cheers in the talent show. Donnie heads back to the cinema, seeing that Gretchen is still asleep, not noticing that he left. The following morning, Donnie shares his worries about his sanity with his father. Not wanting his son to be dragged down by these thoughts, Eddie advises Donnie to speak his mind no matter what others think. Donnie is comforted, seeing his father's confidence in him. While extinguishing the fire in Jim's house, the news reveals that the firefighters found obscene content involving minors, leading to Jim's arrest. On October 24th, Ms. Pomeroy gets fired without being given a reason for her dismissal. Samantha's dance group is invited to perform in California, which excites their coach, Mrs. Farmer. However, her joy is soon cut short when she learns about Jim's arrest. 
In one of her last classes, Ms. Pomeroy uses the rabbits from Watership Down as a metaphor for human existence. But Donnie interrupts her, noting how the rabbits cannot compare to humans as they have no complex emotions. Gretchen chimes to explain how the rabbits in the novel are products of the author's imagination, thus carrying his emotion. That afternoon, Mrs. Farmer asks Rose to chaperone the dance group's trip to California while she testifies to defend Jim, believing his arrest is a conspiracy. Later that day, Rose finds a disturbing sketch Donnie made in his bedroom. She explains how she'll be leaving with Samantha to California, and with Eddie being in New York will leave Donnie and Elizabeth alone in the house. Knowing that she's disturbed by his drawings, Donnie asks her what it feels to have a son like him, to which she comforts him by saying she feels wonderful for having him. Days later, Elizabeth and Donnie say goodbye to Rose and Samantha as they head to California. After school, Donnie finds Ms. Pomeroy packing up her things. Getting inspired by Ms. Pomeroy's story of a linguist choosing the word cellar door as the most beautiful in the English language, Donnie tells Charita that things will get better for her. Tearfully, Charita runs away, leaving her earmuffs in his hands. Donnie looks down and sees Charita dropped a notebook with his name on the front. Donnie revisits Dr. Thurman, where she asks him about his parents while he's under hypnosis. Donnie remembers not receiving the Christmas present he wanted, which made him feel regret. When Dr. Thurman asks what else he regrets, Donnie smiles sheepishly and confesses to his crimes. He explains that he had to obey Frank as he saved his life and that he'd be left alone if he didn't. Donnie begins to cry, his face reddening, as he tells Dr. Thurman about Frank's end-of-the-world prediction. Still under hypnosis, Donnie gets up and picks up a stuffed dog, cradling it in his arms for comfort. Then, he opens his eyes and shrieks, seeing Frank in front of them. Donnie's face calms, telling Dr. Thurman that the sky will open up. Dr. Thurman reminds him that there will be nothing left but himself and Frank if the sky opens up. The idea brings Donnie to tears until Dr. Thurman breaks him out of his hypnosis. Before he leaves her office, Dr. Thurman reveals that his medicines are placebo and he should stop taking them. She identifies to him the difference between atheists and agnostics, classifying him as the latter. On October 29th, Elizabeth announces to Donnie that she's been accepted into Harvard. He suggests throwing a Halloween party to celebrate. That evening, Gretchen arrives at the party, distraught about her missing mother. Donnie takes her to his bedroom, where she shares her suspicion that her stepfather is responsible. The two start making out and head back to the party after a passionate evening. During this, Elizabeth searches for someone named Frank. Donnie's elated mood is suddenly warped into dread. He sees the bubble from his chest that leads him to the note on the fridge, saying that Frank went out to buy beer. The bubble continues to move, showing him visions that disturb him. Donnie takes Gretchen, Ronald, and Sean away from the party. They go to Roberta's house, where Donnie and Gretchen enter through the cellar door. They search for Roberta but get ambushed by Seth and Ricky, who hold the two at knife point. Ricky throws Gretchen to the ground before scaring Ronald and Sean away. He sees a car coming and warns Seth, who is Donnie pinned to the ground. Ricky escapes before the car gets close. Roberta appears in the middle of the road, causing the car to swerve and hit Gretchen instead. The scene finally forces Seth to let go of Donnie and escape. Two boys step out of the car, including Frank, who is now only an average teenager. Cold with grief, Donnie shoots Frank in the eye with a gun he stole from his parents' room. After Frank's friend flees, Roberto approaches Donnie, having received the letter he sent her. She tells him that a storm is coming, so he must hurry. That morning, Donnie carries Gretchen's body back to his house. He takes his parents' car and finds a dark vortex slowly descending over his house. Donnie recklessly drives to a ridge overlooking the town with Gretchen's body in the passenger seat. Laughing at his hopelessness, Donnie watches the vortex growing bigger, destroying the plane Rose and Samantha are in. As Donnie gazes at Gretchen's face, the events of the last 28 days replay in his mind as he recounts the letter he wrote to Roberta. He tells her that he's afraid that the time travel book is not fictional and hopes to have something to look forward to despite the world ending. Donnie is back in his old bedroom, laughing as he realizes that he gets a do-over. It's October 2nd again, and Donnie has a chance to rewrite the past and save Gretchen. He waits in bed as the jet engine falls into his room, crushing him under its weight. The people who would have had life-altering experiences with Donnie of the other timeline wake up from their dreams, including the real Frank. In the morning, this timeline's Gretchen bikes past the Darko's house as Donnie's body is wheeled away. But this Gretchen didn't meet Donnie. So even as she waves to Rose, neither remember each other in this new timeline. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.